Well, it's uh, time for another one of these Wednesday reflections. As has been the pattern, I'll wait a minute or two before actually um, ending up starting the Devo section of it. It's been interesting for me what my schedule looks like with uh, stay-at-home things uh, still in place and trying to balance out which days that means I have stuff I have to do at the office and which days like today where I'm working from home and how that adjusts my schedule and timing. One of the things I've um, noticed or maybe even appreciated in a weird way is that uh, how much less I've been eating out. I don't appreciate that necessarily in a taste factor. Um, I really enjoy eating out for lunches uh, quite often, but uh, from a cost factor and things like that, it's been nice to have so many of the uh, normal daily activities become things uh, that aren't requiring as much money. Um, staying at home obviously means I've been driving less. I haven't filled up gas in my car yet during this time. Uh, it's still the same tank of gas from over a month ago when this all started. And um, that's been a bonus as well. I biked to work a couple of the times that I've needed to go into the office and I found just ways to adjust, uh, figure out what benefits there is to some of the flexibility while also wondering what and when a uh, return to normal will be, whatever normal will become in its new version as that takes place. And so we'll see what all of that ends up looking like here in the next uh, hopefully few days or weeks uh, in our state um, as we hear more about what the expectations are. The current clarity we have goes through this weekend and is an assumption right now that things might be uh, somewhat different even starting next week. I'm uh, personally hopeful for that. I uh, long to return to having people in the room while we're worshiping together and while I'm preaching. Um, it's a more enjoyable experience while there's others of us gathered as God's community and hopeful that that would return um, really, really quick here. Be interested to see what other practices like weekly reflections like this then continue and which ones fall away as schedules get busy again. But uh, have been enjoying spending some time just giving some of the thoughts I've been having uh, in my own devotions and as I've been processing this season as God's been revealing himself to me um, in scripture, what what he's trying to reveal as I process through that and being able to share that with a few of you as well as you all engage with these videos either live or afterwards. And so uh, today have just a reflection from uh, Psalm 42. A uh, former preaching professor of mine in seminary uh, has been doing some reflections like this occasionally that I've been watching on Facebook. And he's had uh, a couple days ago, he reflected on Psalm 42 and just caused me to start reading it a little more and caused me to start um, reflecting and focusing on it. So over the last couple of days, uh, I've spent some time in Psalm 42 each day uh, thinking through what God may be saying to me in this season. And so... Uh, here's uh, how that psalm opens, Psalm 42, uh, even before the opening, just says this is for the director of the music. It's a masculine, that's a musical term, of the sons of Korah. So it's written by the sons of Korah. If you don't know much about the sons of Korah, best understanding uh, in the broad sense that we can give is they were uh, kind of like music leaders, choir masters, singers, or song leaders, worship pastors, maybe, as you might want to label them, uh, for the people of God um, under David's rule. So while David was king, the sons of Korah were people who helped lead worship at the temple and some of those kinds of things. And so this is written uh, by one of those sons. And what we'll see here is uh, they're expressing a frustration that they're not able to gather corporately in the same way for worship. It opens this way. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? A question maybe some of us have been asking about corporate worship. When do we get to return to patterns of worshiping God that we've become used to, that have become normalized? I would argue that are better than digital patterns because they involve the community. And I think that's an important aspect that gets lost when we're separated digitally like this. Uh, this person, the son of Cora says, uh, I long for that. When do I get to do that? But one of the things I most have noticed these last couple of days as I've reflected on it is 
is that beginning section, even before it's this request of questioning when he gets to go back or when they get to go back and meet with God. There's this understanding what my soul thirsts for. My soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Then I'd be curious as we find senses of wishing environments were different, like it sounds like the sons of Korah in that moment are wishing for the environment to be different. What's the strongest longing we have? Theirs at the moment seems to be at least expressed in this psalm. Their strongest longing is for God. Not just a return to normal, not just a uh, emotional release, not just a financial freedom, not just the ability to go eat out again. There's this longing, a soul level longing that says, what I'm most longing for is God. And one of the things that I found interesting uh, with some people I talked to is that this last season where we may have been distant from each other as a community has caused others to recognize their soul's longing. And they've maybe become more intimate in their disciplines and with God during this season. As things have slowed down, as there's been more rest or maybe more flexibility, they've turned their eyes and attention to God more. And so they got this longing and thirst for God in a way they didn't before. Whereas the sons of Korah seem to be describing like, I'm not able to engage with my longing for God the way I always have. And I want to be able to do that again. And there's a longing for that return. I would just encourage you to think through for yourself what your soul is longing for. Not just to start it, what do I hope to be true? We're allowed to have those hopes. We can long to return to work. We can long to patterns of different social behaviors like sporting events or eating out to be normalized again. But at the deepest level, are those just physical and emotional desires we have? And, and maybe differently than that, what is our soul's desire? Do we just want to return to church because we like the people? Oh, I, I hope that's a reason we want to return. I hope we do like each other. And yet, do we also recognize that maybe our soul is longing for a better expression of worship and community with others as we've been used to it? What is it that your soul longs for? Uh, the psalmist, uh, sons of Korah, continue. My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? And these things I remember as I pour out my soul. This is what he said. they say they remember. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the, fe the festive throng. God, my soul longs for you. And, and I'm saddened by the state I'm in. I'm saddened that the routine, whatever's keeping them from the temple at the time, has kept them from the temple. And I'm saddened by it so much that it says, uh, my tears are my food day and night. And I remember as I pour out my soul how I used to go and celebrate. And I used to be in a community of people singing your praise. And I long for that again. My soul longs for that. And maybe that's just what you come to as you take uh inventory of your own soul that there's this deep longing that it's frustrating that you feel maybe depressed or emotionally down he uses words like that like my tears are my food day and night i'm focused on this sadness it's just a distant memory of when things were good and i'm in a negative feeling kind of place maybe you've arrived at that and you wonder well, what am i supposed to do if that's the place i'm at but thankfully the sons of korah in this continued psalm Tell us some of what they try. This is what they go on to say. It's a talking they have with their own soul. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. It's almost this moment of just saying, I don't. I don't know why it's so overwhelming to me. I know that things are going to change. I long for a day that they will. And I know that I can have hope in that soul. Stop being so consumed by the sadness of the situation right now. Put your hope in God. I'll, I'll praise him again, my Savior and God. I can do that now. He doesn't say it that clearly, but we can do that now and hopefully have been. And yet also recognize I, I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And that's the hope of what will take place. That's my hope for us. It's a shorter thought today, a shorter reflection today. 
but a hope that while we're downcast, we would recognize uh, that that's okay, but that we would try to take inventory of what is it that our soul most long for, not just what do we physically hope returns or emotionally hope returns, what does our soul most long for? And how do we hope to center it on a longing for God that's supposed to be our primary longing? And then what is it we do as we feel those negative thoughts, as we feel saddened, as we feel frustrated, as we feel uh, lost from the or chaotic in this season? What do we do as take inventory like they do and then talk to our own souls, remind ourselves of hope that we can place in God, remind ourselves that this is a season that will end, remind ourselves that we'll return to a praise that we're used to in some way. Things will always look a little different probably, but we'll return to an experience that will feel grand in its expression of worship and that we can have hope in that even now at this time. The rest of the psalm goes on to, to almost just kind of cycle through that kind of self-talk. My soul's downcast within me. Therefore, I'm going to remember you. I'll remember what you've done before and where you've done it, how deep has called to deep, how your waves have swept over me, how your love has been directed towards me at night. Your song's been there for me. And I'm going to pray to you, the God of my life. I'm going to recognize back into some negative language of why have you forgotten me or why must I be mourning or oppressed by the enemy? Why do I feel like I'm suffering and asking where you are? And then he's going to refrain again with what he's already said. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I don't know what the rest of your day holds. But I hope parts of it can include a recognition of hope that's placed in God, that you can praise him and that you can recognize him as a savior and God centered on that first and foremost and figuring out everything else after that. Have a blessed rest of your Wednesday or whenever you're viewing this. And I look forward uh, to worshiping together with you soon, whether digitally or in person. God bless.